All right, guys, this is section 4.2. Today, we're going to be finding the slope of a line. And we're going to be doing more than just what you did last year, where you just looked at a graph to find the slope. We're going to be doing that. And then we're also going to be able to find the slope from using two points and also from a table as well. So <clears throat> let's review what slope is. Slope is the rate of change between any two points on a line. It is the measure of the steepness of that line. Okay, so the slope is a numerical value, usually a fraction or a ratio. When they say um, a rate of change, that would be a ratio. Um, and it measures the steepness of a line. So lines that look like this one have a positive slope. And lines that would go the opposite which way, which would look like this, have a negative slope. Okay, to find the slope, we find the change in y over the change in x. Okay, now interestingly, we have a, a way of representing that. I can get my, there we go. The change in y is also referred to as delta y, and the change in x is also referred to as delta x. And so that delta symbol, which looks like a triangle, is a Greek letter of the alphabet, and it represents the phrase change in. So it means that we're finding the difference in the y coordinates and the difference in the x coordinates. Okay, so we're going to see that a lot here today. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is I've got a line here that has black points and pink points on it. it says find the slope of the line using the two black points and then again using the two pink points and see what you notice. So let's do the black points first. To find the slope again you have to find the change in y over the change in x and so you're probably used to hearing that referred to as rise over run. So start with one of the points and you can calculate the rise by counting how far up you have to travel to get to the next point. Okay, so we traveled up two. And then the run is how far over you have to travel to get to that point. So one, two, three. Now be careful when you write this as a fraction, it's rise over run, not run over rise. So I'm going to write that up here so we don't forget it. The change in y or delta y is the rise. And delta x is the run. So it's rise over run, not run over rise. So I'm going to put my rise number first, which was two. And my run number last on the bottom, which was three. So the slope of this line is two thirds. Now watch what happens when we find the slope using the pink points. This time, instead of rising two, I'm gonna to have to rise one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm gonna to have to run or six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if I write my slope using the pink points, I get the fraction six over nine. But like other ratios or fractions we do, slope must be reduced. So actually, six ninths does reduce to two thirds. And so no matter which two points on the line you use, um, you get the same ratio of two thirds, whether it reduces or just gives you two thirds. So that's interesting. That's good to know that you can use any two points on the line. In fact, even if you use a pink point and a black point, you're still going to get two thirds. Now, the question becomes, well, what if I don't rise up? What if I go down? Well, Instead of going back to the two black points, instead of, you know, starting at the left point and rising up to like we did here, if you started at the right point and went down to, you would just represent that as a negative two. So anytime I'm going up, it's positive. Anytime I go down, it's negative. That makes sense. Also, anytime I go to the right, it's positive, because if you think about the X and Y axis, It's a bad looking arrow. If you think about the X and Y axis, there's the X, there's the Y. Um, all the positive numbers are on the right side. All the negative numbers are on the left side. Uh, on the Y axis, all the positive numbers are up and all the negative numbers are down. So anytime I go down or left, it's negative. Anytime I go up or right, it's positive. So maybe I could just simplify this by writing this. So I would go left three, 
So I'd write that as a negative three. So then I get the fraction negative two over negative three. And well, anytime I have two negatives, that makes a positive. So no matter which direction I go or which two points I use, I'm always getting the same answer for my slope. Oh, I guess I didn't erase this. The slope of a line is the same between any two points on the line because the lines have a constant rate of change. That's what makes them lines. No matter where I am on the line, I'm always going to go up two over three to find another point on that line. Okay. The slope M of a line is the rate of change. So the slope and we use the, uh, the letter M for slope. If you're wondering why it's the letter M, I don't have the answer for that, but I can tell you that anytime this year, next year, whenever you're referring to slope, it's always referred to as the letter M. So the slope M of a line is the rate of change in Y or the rise Um, to the change in X or the run, sorry, I lost my spot, to the change in X, which is the run between any two points on the line. And so for the first point, we're going to use X1, Y1. Those are subscripts, which means they go below the number. So X1, Y1, and then X2, Y2. And so we're using these numbers, not that we're timesing by one or two, but just to make sure we know which is the first point and which is the second point. So for example, if I wanted to find the slope of this line, I could call this point here, X1, Y1, and this point here, X2, Y2, and that just means it's the second point, okay? So to find the rise, you can count how far up or down you're moving, or you could just simply subtract the Y coordinates, Y2 minus Y1, gives you the rise. So for example, if it was, we'll plug numbers in here. Let's say this was seven and this was um, three. And we'll say that this point was um, nine. And we'll say that this one was negative one, okay? I don't know if those are even accurate, but whatever. So if I wanted to find the rise, I could count from the point three we have, or three on the y-axis, I could count up to seven, but that's just seven minus three. That means we're going to move up four. And then I'm moving from negative one over to nine, which is actually moving 10. So you can just subtract because nine minus negative one is 10, and that would give you the rise and the run. So this is probably the most important thing from today. The M or the slope is the rise over the run. It's the change in Y over the change in X. And it can also be found by subtracting your Y coordinates and then subtracting your X coordinates. The rise, the Y goes on top, the X, the run goes on bottom. All right, so let's continue finding slope from a graph. Again, this is something you did last year. So if you've forgotten this, it's a good thing we're reviewing it. Um, it's gonna be a really important tool that we're gonna use this year. Okay, so um, to find the slope of these two points, you can see they've already counted for you. They, I'm not sure why they went this way first, but um, anyways, they rose up five. So you can see that they did that in red there. And then they ran over six. So the rise is five and the run is six and that fraction doesn't reduce. Okay, for the next one, they went down three. Look how they represented that because they went down, they wrote it as negative three, didn't I? So they went down three and then they ran right two. So they wrote it as positive two. And so for the slope of this line, you'd write negative three over two. Or you could write positive three over negative two, or you could just put the negative in the middle, which is typically what I do. I put the negative in the middle. It, we know from our time working with fractions that um, if the negative is written top, bottom, middle, doesn't matter. It means it's negative. Also, look at how the lines are drawn. Positive lines, positively sloped lines, go uphill from left to right. Okay, they go uphill from left to right. Negatively sloped lines will go downhill from left to right, like this. So you can actually tell just by looking at the line if it's going to be positive or negative. For example, A, I can tell that this line, because it goes downhill from left to right, 
is going to be negative. Okay, so to prove that, we can look and we can use the two points they gave us. Down one, there's our negative. And then one, two, three, four, five. Positive five because I went right five. And that gives me a slope of negative one fifth. You could also have started from the right side point and gone up one, but then you would have gone left five. So the five would have been negative in this case. And again, it doesn't matter if it's negative one over five or one over negative five, it's still the fraction negative one fifth. Example B, this one I can tell is gonna be positive because it's going uphill from left to right. So it's gonna be a positive slope. So find what the slope actually is. Count your rise, two, and then count your run. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the slope is two, six, which this one actually reduces. And two, six is gonna to reduce to one third. Make sure you reduce your slopes. Example C. This one's also gonna be a positive slope. I'm rising up one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, make sure I counted correctly. And I'm running two. Since I'm running to the right, that's a positive. So they're both positive. So my fraction is five over two. Okay, now, if you get an improper fraction like this, five over two, you need to leave it as five over two. Do not write it as a mixed number. Slope cannot be written as a mixed number it can only be written as a ratio. Now, that being said, if you get a fraction like six over one, you can actually reduce that to six because we know six over one is the same as six. But if you get a fraction like five halves, you need to leave that as five halves, okay? So here are some common mistakes. Slope is a ratio, not a point. So don't write it as five comma two. I see that a lot with my seventh graders uh, that are taking regular seventh grade math, I should say. Um, they write that because they think it's a point. It's not a point. The slope is not a point on the line. It's the steepness of the line. So it's not a point. Also, no writing it as mixed numbers. Leave it as an improper fraction, okay? Example D. My rise is up one two, three, four and a half. Okay, so I went up four and a half. So 4.5. And then I'm gonna run over one, two, three, four, five, and six. So my slope is actually, well, I'm gonna write it as 4.5 over six, but I'm not gonna leave it like that because I can't have a decimal in my slope either. Okay, it needs to be a fraction without a decimal. And so the way I can avoid this is if it's 0.5, I could actually just times the top and number, bottom numbers by two. Okay, so I'm like not reducing, I'm unreducing it or expanding it. I'm not sure how to say it. So 4.5 times two is nine, and then six times two is 12. And then once I have it as nine twelfths, I can re-reduce it by dividing by three to get three fourths. So the slope of this line is three fourths. Now it's interesting that they gave us, they gave us this point because they wanted it to make it a little bit more difficult. But if the slope reduces to three fourths, that means watch this, I could have started at this point and rose up one, two, three, and then ran one, two, three, four. And that puts us right there on the line, which happens to go through the origin. So they could have given us this point as well. You can use any two points to find the slope. They happen to give us one of the more difficult points right there. So again, if you have a decimal in your slope, you need to get the decimal out of there. Now, by timesing by two, you can get rid of the 0.5 because you're doubling a half, right? If it was anything else, another thing you could do is you could times by 10 on top and bottom. That's gonna move the decimal over to the right, which would make this fraction 45 over 60, which actually still reduces to 3 fourths. I would prefer to times by two because it just becomes 9 twelfths, but if you get a decimal like 0. 0.6 or 0. 0.8, you can just times by 10, slide the decimal over one spot, and you can get rid of the decimal that way. Okay, example E. <clears throat> 
Now, this one's tricky um, because on the x-axis, they're counting by ones, but what are they counting by on the y-axis? Well, they're counting by twos. So when I go up half, it's actually going up one. So one, two, three. I just went up three right there. I went from five to eight, which means I went up three. And then I'm gonna run over one, which makes sense because I'm going from one to two on the x-axis. So this becomes three over one. And like I mentioned earlier, three over one can just reduce to three. So you can write your slope as a whole number, or actually, since it can be negative, you, I, let me just say you can write it as an integer, but you can't write it as a mixed number. Example F, to go from the left point to the right point, I'm gonna rise, well, I'm not gonna rise at all. So I guess that'd be rising zero. And then to run, I'm going over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I guess it really doesn't matter because zero over seven is gonna to reduce to zero no matter what, okay? Now, it wouldn't have matter if they gave me six, five, or if they would have given me five, five, or uh, sorry, that's four, five, three, five, or one, five. No matter what, if my line is horizontal, it's gonna have a slope of zero. That's because it's not gonna rise. And anytime the top number of a fraction zero, you end up with a fraction, of, you end up with an answer of zero. So any horizontal line is always gonna have a slope of zero. Well, what does that mean for vertical lines then? Well, for vertical lines, look what's going to happen. I'm going to have a rise. In this case, my rise is four, but I'm not going to have a run. So my fraction is four over zero. Well, that's a problem. Remember, we can't divide by zero. What did we put anytime we were supposed to divide by zero? There's a word we're supposed to write for that. When you divide by zero, the word is undefined. And also, you can't have zero in the bottom of a fraction. We've talked about that before as well. So when I have zero in the bottom of my fraction, I'm going to write the word undefined. Or you can abbreviate it, UNDF. Okay, so anytime I have a, a line that's vertical, it doesn't matter how many I'm rising, I'm still going to get a run of zero that's gonna be undefined. So all vertical lines have an undefined slope and all horizontal lines have a zero slope. Don't write that it has no slope. I've seen students do that before. The word no slope would mean zero slope, okay? Zero slope would mean, so, so don't write that this line here has no slope. You have to write that it's undefined. Okay, so it says, what are the equations for the lines in G and H? Um, we haven't talked about that yet, so I'm going to skip it for now. Okay, I'll come back to that. So the slope of every horizontal line is zero, and the slope of every vertical line is undefined. And here we have a chart here where we can see all the different types of slopes. Come on, lights, turn back on. Let's see if I can get them back on. There we go. Okay, so positive slopes go uphill from left to right. Negative slopes go downhill from left to right. Zero slopes, horizontal, undefined slope, vertical line. Okay, so now let's go back to that equations then. It says, what are the equations for the lines and examples G and F? So we have talked about this. I guess I was referring to this section. We haven't, but in section 4.1, we actually talked about horizontal and vertical lines. And we said that if you have a horizontal line, then the, y is, the, the line is always going to be Y equals, and then wherever it's crossing the Y axis. Okay, well, this line happens to be crossing the y-axis right here at five. And you'll notice the y-coordinates for any point on this line are always five. So we write y is always five. So y equals five. And then for g, we said that anytime you have a vertical line, back in the four point, lesson 4.1, we said that anytime you have a vertical line, the x is what you write first. And then you write where it crosses the x-axis, which is crossing the x-axis here at four. And if you look, 
no matter where you are on this line, the X coordinate is always going to be four. So X is always four, okay? So the equations were Y equals five, for example, F, and X equals four, for example, G. I guess I should have put that after. I want to make sure I, I drove the point home that we were talking about zero and undefined slopes. <clears throat> All right, so that's from a graph. Now we're going to get into the um, the eighth grade math, which is how do I find slope given two points? Well, remember we said slope is rise over run, and we've been counting rise over run. But one of the ways you can count the rise over run is just by subtracting the y coordinates and then subtracting the x coordinates to get your rise and run. Okay, so I'm going to do that um, because we're not going to have graphs anymore. We're just going to have the points. So m equals slope equals rise over run, it also equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let me show you how this works. I'm going to call this x1, I'm going to call this x2. The first x coordinate, the second x coordinate. Now if I call negative 3 x1, that means I have to call 5 y1, because the 1s have to be together and the 2s have to be together. Okay, now according to our um, formula here, I'm going to take y2 minus y1, which means negative 1 minus 5, over x2, or 6, minus x1, so minus negative 3. Okay. Now, 6 minus negative 3 actually becomes 6 plus 3, positive 3, and so that's going to be 9 on bottom. And on the top, negative one minus five actually becomes negative one plus negative five. And that's gonna become negative six. So I get the fraction negative six over nine, and that's gonna to reduce to negative two thirds. So you don't actually have to have a graph of the line to figure out what its slope is. You can just subtract the Y coordinates and you can subtract the X coordinates. Now, it doesn't matter which point you call x1 y and y1 and which point you call x2 y2 it doesn't matter because as long as the ones are together and the twos are together and you're consistent with how you write that you'll end up getting the same answer let me show you why so if i move the 5 over to whoops if i move the 5 over to this side and the negative 1 over to that side Now it says five minus negative one, which would be six. But if I move the negative three over to this side and the six over to that side, so again, I'm com completely rearranging the Y2 and the Y1 and the X2 and the X1. And if I do that, now negative three to minus six is gonna give me negative nine and that still gives me the fraction of two thirds. So it doesn't matter which point you call y, x1, y1 and which point you call x2, y2, as long as you're consistent. What you can't do is six minus negative three and then turn around and do five minus negative one. If you're gonna do six minus negative three, then you gotta make sure you do negative one minus five or the other way around. If you do negative, if you do five minus negative one, you have to make sure you do negative three minus six. Make sure you're putting the y, different, the change in y on top and the change in x on bottom, rise over run, not run over rise. Example B, we'll call this x1 again, just because it was the first one, not because it's more important. Oops, we'll call this y1, we'll call this x2, and we'll call this one y two, and so I'm going to do negative two minus negative two for y2 minus y1, and I'm going to do seven minus one for x2 minus x1. Negative two minus negative two is the same as negative two plus positive two, which is zero. Seven minus six, seven minus one is six, and that's going to reduce to zero. So what's that tell you if you have a slope of zero? If you have a slope of zero, that means that these, these two points are gonna be sitting on a horizontal line because any line that is slope of zero is gonna be horizontal, okay? All right, let's go back down. Um, example C, Y2, negative three, minus Y1, 
also negative three. I'm sorry, I, I did the X's first. That's my bad. Let's try it, let's start over. Y2 is zero minus negative three for Y1. Let's write it down so you can see what I'm doing. Over X2, negative three minus X1, also negative three. So zero minus negative three is the same as zero plus three. And negative three minus negative three is the same as negative three plus three, which is zero. And this time I've got zero on the bottom of my fraction, which means this one is gonna be undefined. And I'm gonna abbreviate that undefined. And so what kind of line would have an undefined slope? Yeah, it'd be a vertical line. Yeah, vertical line. You can see undefined slopes always are vertical lines. And it makes sense because look, the X coordinates are the same. So negative three, negative three is right there and negative three zero is right there. So they're vertical from each other. Whereas in the last example, uh, one negative two is gonna be right there and seven negative two is gonna be all the way over here and they're horizontal from each other. All right, negative two minus negative one or y two minus y one all over six minus eight or x two minus x one. That's gonna give us a slope or a rise, I should say, uh, of negative two plus positive one, just negative one over the run. Six minus eight is negative two. And that's gonna reduce simply just to positive one half. Two negatives make a positive. All right, and then the last way, so we've talked about finding slope from a graph at all these examples. We talked about finding slope from a from two points. Now we're gonna talk about finding slope from a table. And so this time, it's really the same as what we did last time, except instead of giving us two points, they often give us more than two points, okay? Now we're still going to use the same y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And since they lie on the same line, you can plug in any two points to find your slope formula, okay? So um, for example, A, I could call this my x1, this, is, this would be my y1, this would be my x2 and my y2. And so I would do four, I'm sorry, let's start with the rise first. Would be six minus eight. And the run would be four minus one, or x2 minus x1. And that's gonna give us negative two over three. And so there's my slope, negative two over three. But it doesn't matter if I use those two points or even if I would have used the last two points. If I use the last two points to go from seven to three, I increase three. To go from four to two, I decrease two. My rise is negative two because my y coordinate, change in y coordinate goes on top, remember. And then my change in x coordinate, the positive three goes on bottom. And so no matter what, I'm always getting negative two thirds. Okay, and so if you look here, there's the four points graphed, no matter which two points you use, you'll use because they lie on a line, they're always gonna give you that constant slope of negative two thirds. So it's, I, I think it's actually easier to use the table than it even is, is to use the two points because at least with the table, I can actually just go like this and see what the change is. To, uh, for X, it went from negative three to negative two. So it actually increased one. And for the Y, it went from six to four, so it decreased two. Except be careful, the common mistake when using a table is to write your fraction as one over negative two, but that's wrong because it's rise over run. And which means we have to put the negative two on top because that's the change in Y over the one, which is the run. And so that's actually gonna reduce just to negative two, okay. Is it more difficult to walk up the ramp or the hill? Explain. Well, I can explain by determining their steepnesses. And remember the steepness is just gonna be another way of saying the slope. So for the ramp, you're rising six and running eight while you're walking up that ramp, which reduces to three fourths. For the hill, you're rising eight and running 12 while walking up that hill which reduces to two thirds. Now, if I use a calculator, I know that point that I know that three fourths is 0.75. 
And I know that two thirds or two divided by three is 0.6 repeating, which means the 0.75 is actually steeper. And so it's more difficult to walk up the ramp. And so I'm just gonna let my calculations uh, be the explanation for that because it has a steeper slope. Three fourths is bigger than two thirds. So the ramp is steeper than the hill. All right, the graph shows the amounts you and your friend earn babysitting. Compare the steepness of the lines. What does this mean in the context of the problem? Okay, so here's my babysitting graph. My line is represented by the green color and my friend's line represented by blue. My friend's line is steeper than mine. The blue line is steeper than the green line. And so in the context of this problem, we're talking about babysitting, but we're talking about earnings like dollars per hour, dollars, hours. So if my friend's line is steeper, that make, means they make a higher dollars per hour than I do, which means they get paid more. Okay, they get a paid, I should say they get paid um, a higher rate. They get paid more per hour than I do. If I work more, if I work nine hours and they only work one hour, I'm going to get paid more, but they're getting paid more per hour. That's what the steepness says. Okay, so we can actually find out what that means. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. What does that mean in the context of the problem? They get paid more in terms of dollars per hour for babysitting. So it says, find and interpret the slope of your line and then your friend's line. So my line is the green line. And we're going to use these two points here that they gave us. Our y-axis is counting by tens. So when I rise up two, I'm actually rising up 20. So rise 20 and then run one, two, three, four. We're still counting by ones on the x-axis. So my slope is 20. And then because this is a, a graph with labels, that's $20 because my y, my rise axis is labeled in dollars. And then my run axis, my run is four, is labeled in hours. So I make $20 for four hours, which means if I reduce that, I make $5 in one hour or $5 per hour. Remember, we can write the, uh, the per with a slash. There's a better slash, $5 per hour. My friend on the other hand, now this goes from 28. So I really can't determine, okay, that's gonna be hard to do. So maybe I should do what I did when I was um, subtracting. Why don't we just subtract the Y2 coordinate and the Y1 coordinate to figure out what that difference is because it's gonna be too hard to try to count that on the graph. So 56 minus 28, is my rise. And then in my run, if I do the same thing, is actually just eight minus four, which is four. So I'm gonna get 56 minus 28, that's 28. So my rise is $28. And then my run is four hours, or sorry, not my run, their run is four hours. And so if I reduce their fraction, I make $20 in four hours. They make $28 in four hours, which means they make $7 per hour. And so they're making more money, just like we said. They're making two more dollars per hour than what we are. So you can use the graph if they're giving you nice points, right? Or if they're giving you, like the blue line is giving you points that aren't very nice, like 856, 56 is not. I wouldn't know that's even 56 unless they had written it next to it. And so you can actually just subtract the Y2 minus the Y1, the X2 minus the X1. Um, or here's a secret, <laughs> and erase, well, I won't erase anything. Um, zero, zero is a point on our graph. Because if I work zero hours, I make zero dollars. And so if we would have used zero, zero, we would have gotten rise 20, run four, there's $5 per hour, and then rise, that would be 28, you can see, because it's 28 right here, over four, and then that's $7 per hour. And so we could have used the origin as one of our points as well. Okay, so um, go ahead and get started on 4.2 and let me know if you have any questions.